In this training module, you'll be learning how to drive an LMS Class 4F steam locomotive. During this brief introduction, you'll be taken through the critical driving controls and freight operations. When you're ready, climb onto the footplate. Take a seat at the driver's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. Let's prepare the locomotive for departure. The reverser determines the direction of travel and how much steam is consumed as the locomotive moves. Move the reverser into the full forward position. This ensures you'll get the maximum amount of power to get the train moving. As you pick up speed, you'll need to move the reverser toward mid-gear to reduce cutoff. This will also aid in steam efficiency. This locomotive has a combination brake that controls both steam and vacuum brakes. Steam brakes will apply on just the locomotive. Vacuum brakes will apply to the rest of the train, so long as it's equipped with vacuum brakes. When a vacuum is created, the brakes will release. The driver can use the brake handle to destroy the vacuum, which will start to apply the brakes. To create a vacuum, you should use the ejectors. The small ejector should be left open when the train is running. The large ejector can be used to more quickly increase the vacuum after coupling or heavy braking. Open the cylinder cocks to remove any water from the cylinders after the locomotive has been left standing. Water in the cylinders can damage the locomotive as it does not compress like steam. The regulator acts like the throttle for steam locomotives. It controls how much steam is delivered into the cylinders. Slowly open the regulator to apply some power. Remember that power delivery is delayed in a steam locomotive and applying too much power too early can cause wheel slip. You will need to ensure that all the junctions are correctly aligned before moving the locomotive. As this yard features manual junctions, you'll need to set them by either walking over to them or by using the map. Now that the junctions are aligned, you can move the locomotive over to the wagons and prepare to couple up. When coupling to a train, make sure you're keeping to a slow speed and that you stop just before the buffers. You may find it easier to control the locomotive by having a small brake application as you do this last move.
This locomotive uses manual hook and chain couplings, which will need to be connected by you. You can couple or uncouple from either an external camera or on foot. Let's connect the formation using the external camera. Now couple the locomotive to the freight wagons. Return. The brakes on these wagons are still applied and will need to be released before we can move them. The wagons can now be moved out of the siding. Change direction with the reverser and open the regulator again to get the train moving. Ensure that the junctions are correctly aligned so you can couple to the second set of wagons. Keep in mind that your train is now longer, so remember to watch your speed and come to a stop just before the buffers. wagons are in position. Switch to the external camera again and couple the wagons together. Nice work. You now have a complete train. You can now transport the wagons over to the indicated location. Starting to pick up speed, move the reverser towards mid-gear. 
This reduces the amount of steam let into the cylinders and saves energy. This class of locomotive was first built in 1924 and was designed as a medium-sized freight locomotive. They're based on the design of the Midland Railway's 3835 class, which was originally built in 1911. The class 4F was commonly referred to by train spotters as Duck Sixes, a nickname derived from their 060 wheel arrangement. A total of 575 of this class were produced between 1924 and 1937. Between 1959 and 1966, all of these locomotives were withdrawn from service, with 572 of them being scrapped. Today, only three of this class survives in preservation, only one of which being an example of the pre-grouping Midland Railway design. This locomotive has a tractive effort of over 24,000 pounds and has a top speed of 58 miles per hour. Let's prepare the train to slow down. Bring the train to a stop in the indicated position. Good work. That concludes all the basics of operating this locomotive.